How do you announce a major brand split and then continue to slide in the TV ratings? And at what point do you shrug it off and not blame it on the NBA Finals? Although the NBA Finals, I would much rather watch because it's must-see television and I can DVR WWE at any point. But the question comes, WWE, how many more weeks can you constantly make up excuses when your ratings are hitting the toilet? I'll say this again, that WWE TV ratings aren't the end-all be-all. There's a lot of platforms to watch WWE on, whether it's the network, Hulu, other places, or on DVR. WWE is consumed in a variety of different fashions. Now, their biggest moneymaker, of course, is their TV deal, with their five hours of television on the USA Network. Now, there wouldn't be a reason for them to go live if it wasn't benefiting WWE in some way, shape, or form. Now, Monday Night Raw had the lowest Raw viewership Um it almost went below a 2.0 rating. It was 2.03. That's how close this raw rating came, as the final show's rating was down to 2.97 million viewers averaged. So what does that mean? You started off with three, the second hour went up to 3.1 million, and the last hour drew 2.75 million people. Now, yes, it was number three on cable, behind Rizzoli and Isles and Major Crimes and The O'Reilly Factor. But here's the thing. When you look at all those other shows, I don't necessarily care to look at them as competition. Um, if you're going to watch The O'Reilly Factor instead of WWE, well, I mean, let's be honest here. Now, the thing that it really intrigues me when it comes to these ratings is, you know, WWE is starting to use, or not necessarily WWE, but Dirt Sheets are starting to use YouTube ratings from the previous week's videos that got uploaded to see where they ranked in views, etc., and to be honest with you, I think this is a great amplitude or method to use. You can use YouTube, you can use the Hulu numbers. So we see these TV numbers and we're shocked. Now, here's the thing. If WWE was to lose the third hour of Raw, they would lose between 25 and $50 million on their annual year because of the hour of live television programming because live television deals are insane right now. So if WWE has Raw, which is fluttering around $3 million and it stays around 3 meanwhile... SmackDown jumps up any bit. If SmackDown jumps to $3 million from where it's currently sitting around 2 2.2 usually, uh, and if it jumps up to raw levels, WWE could be in a hell of a position to renegotiate. So they need to take this brand split seriously, and they need to make this brand split absolutely amazing. Now, I will say this. It is a little bit early right now. We are a month away from the brand split, and they're slowly starting to tease stuff in terms of the brand split, we saw on Monday Night Raw that Stephanie said, you know what, uh, you run Raw, we run SmackDown. And they're starting to talk about these shows and they're trying to div it, uh, divvy up the shows. And you look at it, it's like, but I want a bloodbath. I want must-see television. I want this to be a huge deal. And they may be slowly, you know, building it up. They've brought in Teddy Long as a GM. They've brought in, you know, what, what shocked me, uh, first of all, I will say this because I had just tweeted Teddy Long. Uh, a couple days before the Raw appearance, and I was like, we need Teddy Long back, play a play a play, or something like that. And he had responded, and then I was like, yeah, that's what's up. We need Teddy Long. And then he shows back up on TV. And then, you know, they have teasing Corporate Kane, uh, possibly being the GM, and now we want somebody more stable. So who is that? Who's the question? Shane McMahon was supposed to be the savior, man. Shane McMahon was supposed to, to save the company, and he hasn't. He came back to a death-defying stun at WrestleMania, and since then, the GM spot, he just has not found his role. He has not found his um, his run a little bit. You know what I mean? Like, his whole keeping Owens down or keeping the heels down, and then things changed up a bit. And then they're all vying to be the best on the show. So they're giving heels opportunities that they didn't get before. And booking-wise, it doesn't necessarily make sense. If you are a fan here and you're coming into a brand split and you're watching these ratings drop and drop, which sucks because most of these matches... This booking into Money in the Bank. The first week had purpose. All the matches had a reasoning. Then the second week, it was boring. And then last week, I thought they did a good job of tying things in, especially with this week's SmackDowns based on the spoilers. They're doing a good job of, you know, at least making the matches feel a little bit more important. And I don't know if this is because of commentary or how they're doing it, but they are going to get themselves in trouble. You have how many hours of programming you're going to need to fill. And if WWE is smart... They will really stack up on this because it is make or break time for the UE. And it'll be very interesting to see, at least in my opinion, who is the savior? Who is a GM that fixes these ratings? 
Is it just the fact that we are in stiff competition? Is it the NBA Finals? Is it something else? Or is the WWE product getting oversaturated? Or is people just choosing to watch it another place? Because I'm sitting here looking at these ratings and thinking, personally, I can logically see why the ratings would be slipping. And if I'm WWE, I'm not panicking. Okay, Golden State versus LeBron James. Huge deal. Okay, we understand why. But if this continues to happen after the NBA Finals are done, after now the Stanley Cup is over... WWE, you're going to need to slow down on the excuses, examine the product, and realize something big is going to have to change. Now, oftentimes we make threats about stopping watching WWE because the product is crap or else we constantly keep tweeting about the product on Twitter while we're not watching it or we're DVRing it, and that's giving the WWE the exposure they want. Just not watching and not talking about it at all hurts them a heck of a lot more than putting on a crappy show with ratings that still get $3 million because $3 million for USA Network is huge. You know, I remember when I first started watching the network, shows had 5 to 6 million viewers uh, at their peak. Some of my favorite shows in plain sight, Burn Notice, were up there in the 500, 5 million plus viewers. And then ultimately the series started dropping off and now some of their best series around 2 to 3 million, if that. So for WWE... That third hour is big for USA Network. If they drop a couple hundred thousand, it's better than the one million views they would be getting in its slot. So it's worth a lot more money to USA Network. Now, we've heard a lot of things about, oh, PG is making WWE shit. And that's not the case. Um, NXT is PG, and they still make it interesting. They still make it watchable. Uh, One of my favorite things, or not my favorite things, um, but is to finally see the guys that were putting their bodies on the line realize that they didn't have to. And what I mean by that is if you follow Joey Styles on Twitter, people are often tweeting him about bloodshed, ECW, et cetera. And lately he's just been going off on him. Yeah, well, we didn't know what we knew about concussions and CTE back then. Now that we know, we're going to be a hell of a lot more cautious. If you are an active wrestling fan now and you know about the dangers of brain injuries, CTE, you know that this can lead to issues later on in life, and yet you still actively cheer it and and blame WWE for taking care of a superstar or wiping blood off of Samoa Joe. It's like, are you serious? Like, I'm the biggest fan of seeing blood in a match when it pertains to actually needing blood or seeing some vicious stuff or, you know, throwing a blood packet. I don't care. I'd prefer blood packets versus real blading, if I'm being 100% honest, because... The superstars just going out there and blading themselves. In real movies, you don't see them getting shot open or cutting themselves open. You see stunts or special effects. Does that change it? No. It's the moment and situations that make it matter. So when you come into those ratings and you look at it, the constant, well, you got to go away from the PG. You got to bring back the blood. You got to bring back. No, you don't. You really don't, man. You just need to figure out creative ways to deal with people in this era. And I'm not going to be one of them. I'm not going to tell the WWE how to do it or what to do because I have no idea. I have no idea when you are signing some of the best names in the world, when you should be absolutely killing the ratings, how you're barely struggling to get 3 million viewers. Now, I will say this. I, I know a lot of people nowadays that don't have television. I have a lot of friends that, especially when it comes to the NBA Finals, not knowing that they have internet and they could use the Watch ESPN app to watch the NBA Finals, were streaming the NBA Finals because they didn't have TV. And these are you know friends that had TV their whole life. Every time when I go over to their house and they just don't see it worthwhile. They work all the time or you know any shows that they do have, they can watch on Netflix or Hulu and they don't really care and they save money. And I think that's where our generation kind of is. We are in this place where I am very selective about what I spend money on, especially when it comes to WWE. I make a living on it, but I don't go out of my way to purchase WWE stuff. Besides a couple of the shirts, the figures, the towels, or stuff I've gotten from events, which I don't ever buy from events because it's hard to buy a shirt at the events for $25 when you can go online and get a buy one, get one free for the same price. I'm just always that way when it comes to online. If I'm at a store, I'm looking at Amazon. So WWE, I don't know how you're going to fix these ratings, but you are running out of excuses. When the NBA Finals are over, what are you going to blame it on? Are you going to blame it on the fact that the brand split wasn't worked properly? Are you saying that you have no idea what's going to happen? Well, maybe you should have had that laid out before you announced this huge brand split. Are you putting the horse before the cart? Are you getting out there and, you know, I don't know. It'll be very interesting to see, guys, but with the ratings of under 3 million people, what did you think of the show? Let me know in the comment section below. Me personally, 
I watched the first like five minutes, then went away to the living room and came back, and it was still dragging on 35, 40 minutes, a tag team match, which I have no problem with long matches, especially a huge multi-man match that has people involved. Uh, some of my favorite multi-man matches come from New Japan or Ring of Honor, and multi-man matches, if done properly, can be very exciting. Um, and they do help fill a lot of the gaps. But WWE, you got to step your game up, man. I don't know what it's going to take. But uh, in the comment section below, guys, let me know. What is your preferred method of watching WWE? And what do you think of the ratings? Is your rating not being counted? Are you watching on a platform that's not TV? Let me know in the comment section below. And until next time, it's your boy Tubby Emu. WWE ratings, hopefully they rise.